worry, the power didn't go out. The world is coming in under darkness. The world is in darkness. The world is experiencing darkness in physical and in spiritual ways. How many of us like darkness? Raise your hands if you like darkness. You're like, who's going to see me? How many of us like darkness? Does anyone like darkness? No. Uh, we can't see each other. So can you shout it out? No, yes. Anyone like darkness? No. 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 Who likes the light? Yeah. Yes? I do. Yes. <laughs> you like the light. But this isn't a, a dark place. And you're living in a dark time and you're wondering where does the light come from and the world has been covered with darkness the world has been covered under darkness the world started under darkness but in the beginning God created heaven and earth and the earth was without form and void and it was dark and the Spirit of God was hovering over the earth. And then in one moment he spoke, let there be light. light. If they could turn the lights back on. Let there be light. light. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Mm. Isn't that better? Mm -hmm. I can see your faces. You can see each other. Let there be light. light. We're, getting to, we're starting a new... Uh, a series this morning for the next couple of weeks up leading up to Easter Sunday called It's It's On You. Someone say, It's On You. Well, don't say it to me, but say it to somebody next to you. Look to them. Say, It's On You. Come on, come on, tell them like you believe. It's On. Look, find somebody else now. They didn't get it, so get somebody else. Say, It's On You. It's On You. How do we change darkness to light? How do we change, go from light to dark? How do we shift from one to the other? How do we shift the darkness that we may have experienced, are experiencing, or may experience in the future? How as individuals, how as people, how as a community of believers, how as the church, how as the body of Christ in this society, in this world, in this moment, now and now, here and now, can we turn and shift the society of darkness into a society and a place of light? It's on, what is it? It's on you. It's on us. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1, 2, and 3. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1, 2, and 3. When you have it, say Amen. Actually, when you have it, let's stand for the reading of the word. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1, 2, and 3. <coughs> Amen. In the New King James Version, it reads like this. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon, talk to me, upon, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Dear Lord, we thank you for this word. I pray that this word will speak to and through all of us, O Lord Jesus. Lord, we humble ourselves before you once again. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. If you've ever done anything with house, a house or a home or construction or renovation, you know, we like to make sure, we like to have brightness in the home, don't we? We like to, have, to be bright. We like to have as much what? Natural light as possible, right? Some of us may like it a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more dim, or some of us may like it more bright. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's up to your taste. But as much natural light that you can get into a home, that's what they, because what? Natural light is what? It's cheap. Right? Who likes cheap? No, I'm just natural light is the natural light. It's, you don't have to do anything for it. The sun comes up and you have that light and it fills your home. 
You don't have to turn on the switch. You don't have to put on candles. You don't have to put on any anything in terms of power, electricity. It is natural light. And that's what the natural light is not just in the physical. There is a spiritual or a supernatural light that has to be inside each and every one of us. So that we don't have to depend on power. We don't have to depend on worship. We don't have to depend on anything else. We don't have to depend on gatherings. We don't have to depend on a structure. We don't have to depend on a building. We don't have to depend on a church. We don't have to depend on our small group. We don't have to depend on our leaders. That regardless of what we don't have, we still have a supernatural light that is within us that cannot be shut down. Amen? Amen. The supernatural light is no other light than the light that Jesus brings and is. I said that it's a dark world. And I want to show to you, I know I kind of recited the scripture, but let's go, because sometimes we have to see it for ourselves in the word. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, because darkness was not a, how many would say we are in a dark time in society right now? Mm. Right? If you have to worry about the safety of your children going to schools, we're in a dark time right now. Mm. Right? If you have to worry about, oh, I don't want to go out to the mall, or I don't want to travel out of the country, or I don't want to do this or that, if that inkling of fear or doubt comes into our mind, we're sitting and living in a time that it is a dark place. You know, people are saying that when you study the readings and the teachings and the, and the sermons of uh, old preachers and old evangelists like the Spurgeons and the Finneys that were back in this 18th and 19th centuries of, in other parts of the country, uh, world and around here as well, you see that... They said, oh, we're living in a dark time, man, if they only knew what we're going through. Mm. Right? We're going to say the same thing. We're worried about the, the society that our kids are going to grow up in, that they're already growing up in. When they become adults and uh, people that make it, can make their own decisions, we're worried about, oh, my God, what is this country, what is this world going to look like when they're able to become their own people and they're own just making their own decisions. Right now, we as... Families and parents may have a little bit of control. Of, we have a covering over them. But what happens when we release them? I promise you, many of us have certain fears and doubts. But I promise you, if you can trust them into the hands of the Lord. And I want to show you that darkness was not just now. There was darkness in the beginning. So don't be scared about, oh, it's dark and it's bad now. It's going to get worse. Because it got worse from the beginning. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. We'll go right back to the very beginning. Genesis 1. I know you may have it memorized, but even if you do, just oblige. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And what is it? And? Darkness. Talk, talk. And? Darkness. Was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. To read what we had our base or key scripture in context. In Isaiah chapter 59, you see that the people of Israel have separated from God. They have now confessed their sin and the Lord is standing up for them. In verse 19, it reads like this. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. And his glory from the rising of the sun. The last part is key. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Amen? In the beginning, before there was people, in the beginning, before there was anything else created, there was an earth, there was a, 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 a all of creation, not the earth, all of creation was without form and it was void. There was no form and it was void or empty. And what was the next main thing that it says? There was no form and it was? Talk. It was? It was dark. It was dark like you turn off the lights in your room when you go to sleep. It was dark like even when you want to sleep in the day. And what do you do in the, in the day? And if you got light coming into your room, what do you try to do? You get yourself under the? Covers, right? You pull the covers up and try to get under there so that it gets as dark as possible. And even when the enemy comes in like a flood and when he comes in like he's trying to cover you up, the Lord says that in those moments I can raise up a standard because the Spirit of the Lord can rise up upon you and also within you that no matter how dark it gets, Amen. no matter how dark it is in your life, that the Lord can still move in the darkest moments of your life. Amen? Amen? 
It said, it's a dark world, but we come to another dark moment in history where between the writings of the Old Testament and before the writings of the New Testament, there was an emptiness there. There was an emptiness that the Bible does not clearly record, but there is an emptiness in history that is only now coming into play after we read about the Gospel of Matt, according to the Gospel of Matthew, that Jesus Christ was born. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was without form, and it was void, and in darkness, and he spoke, let there be light. light. And he spoke, let there be light, and he divided the light from the darkness. And he called the light, what? Day. And he called the darkness, night. It was dark. And he spoke, let there be light, and light showed up. It was a dark time. But a cool thing that I, the Lord showed to me in <clears throat> studying these two scriptures between the beginning of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament, pay, look at the parallels. There was darkness in the beginning, and there was darkness in that time between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and something had to come on the scene. And in the beginning, it says that in the, it was formless, and it was void, and but there was one thing that was there. What was that? What was it? The Spirit of the Lord was what? Hovering over the deep. Picture that. I need you guys to go along with me. Spirit of the Lord was hovering. Has anyone ever hovered over you? And you're like, oh, give me my personal space, right? Anyone ever hover over you? Anyone ever hover over you? Over you. Pay attention to the imagery. The Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord in the time of darkness came upon a virgin woman called Mary and hovered over her. And he spoke to her through the angel of God. In the beginning, the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the darkness and over the deep. And he spoke, let there be light, and there was light. In the New Testament, there was darkness and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering and hovered over Mary. Hovered over Mary. And he spoke to Mary and said, let there be a child formed inside your womb. And he came to be. In both times, he's, the Spirit of the Lord was there and the voice of God spoke. And when the voice of God and the Word of God and the Spirit of God is present in the darkest times of your life, I promise you, he just has to speak a word. He just has to declare a word. He just has to declare the promises of God in the darkest times of your life. If you have the Spirit of God hovering over you, there is still hope for you to lie for the light of glory to shine on and shine through your, yes. your darkest times. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When you show that to me, I'm like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to... Hmm. I don't know if we get it. In the darkness, in the formless, in the void, Voids of our life. In the darkness, in the emptiness, in the, in the craziness of the darkest times of our life. The Spirit of the Lord is still hovering over this earth. Amen. Because if the Spirit of the Lord was ever taken off of this country, over this earth, off of this galaxy, this would be in chaos. But thank God the Spirit of the Lord is still hovering over this earth. Amen. And until that Spirit of God is removed, there cannot be anything that happens under the eyes and under the watchful care of God that He does not know about. Because He knows even every hair that falls off your head. So no matter how dark it is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how crazy it looks and feels, I promise you, if you have the Spirit of God and the Word of God that can speak life into your situation, you got everything that you need to carry you to the darkest and carry you through the darkest times of your life. Let there be... Light. He said, let there be light, and he said, there will be a sun, and the light is no other manufactured light. The light is not the church. The light is not the denomination. The light is not anything else. The light is Jesus Christ himself. Why? Because the Bible tells me. I'm not trying to share opinions with you. 
If I'm here to share opinions with you, let's have a conversation at a coffee shop. But we're here to hear and declare the word of God. Correct? Amen. Let's go to John chapter 5. Sorry, John chapter 8, I apologize. John chapter 8, verse 12. If they can help me out. John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke, oh man, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said what? I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Who is the light of the world? Jesus. Who is the light of the world? Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Turn with me there. For God who said... Look at that. Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, talking about the Old Testament, what we've read already. For the God who said, let there be light in darkness has made this light shine in our hearts so we can know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Who is it? Jesus. Jesus. Let's show also 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Go there, go there on your phones, on your paper, on your computer. Verse 5 through 7. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. Who? Who is it? Talk to me. God is. God is. And there is no darkness in him at. Keep going. Six. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. Seven. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let there be light. The light is nothing else and no one else other than Jesus Christ. Here it says, Isaiah chapter 60, the main verse. Arise, shine, for your light has come. come. For your light has come. See, when you study the book of Isaiah, this is a prophetic book as much as it is another book in the Bible. You know, they say that the book of Isaiah, you can consider it as the... How many Gospels are there in the Bible, by the way? Just as a Bible quiz question. How many Gospels? How many? Four. Like, you guys really believe that, or you just kind of... How many Gospels? Four. Four. Scholars say that Isaiah could be considered the fifth Gospel. They say it could be considered the fifth Gospel because this book, like no other book, talks about the... Christ talks about the coming of the Messiah like no other book. And this is also a prophetic chapter. Isaiah chapter 60 and 61 is a prophetic chapter. Not just about Jesus Christ's first coming to the earth, but his second coming, which it's talking about. And here it's, talk, it's prophetic, but it's also applicable to us to make it personal. That your light has come. The light of the world is no other than Jesus Christ. He has already come on this earth as we see in the Bible, chronicled through the scriptures and history. He has already come. He has gone to the cross. He died for our sins and our salvation and our redemption for eternity. He went to the grave and he rose up on the third day and he resurrected and the tape tomb is empty and he ran out of the grave and now he's sitting on the right hand of God in heaven. But he's also going to come again and that time they're going to say, your light has has come. come. Arise and shine for your light has come. You see, our light has not come into our life until, until and unless we have received Jesus Christ into our life. Because the Bible tells us, it shows us that there can't be light in us until we are in the light. That's what we read, right? That if we have fellowship with God, and if we're walking in the light, and who is the light? Jesus. Who's the light? Jesus. Jesus. If we're walking in the light, and who, if it's Jesus, we can walk in the light and not be in darkness. But here's the, you know, it's one thing to, you know, the lights were shut off before and it seemed a little darker. I know we had some light coming in and all that. Kind of ruined the point, but. We think, hey, we were once in darkness. 
We were just walking in darkness, right? I was walking in the dark. You were sitting in the darkness, right? In the darkness. But Paul writes in the book of Ephesians that you were once darkness. It said you were not in the darkness because that could be, you know, you can get yourself out of the darkness, correct? If I walked into a dark place, you know, as a little kid, I didn't like it even as an adult. I don't like dark places, right? If you come up here to this building in the middle of the week, like I get to do once, a, you know, a few times, and I run up, if I go upstairs and I have to get out, that when I turn off all the lights in that hall, that gets dark, and I'm like, all right, I'm running out of there quick. I don't even come through the lobby. I go through the side door. I run out of there quick because I don't like the dark spaces, even though it's church and the presence of God is here. I don't like dark places, but if we go into the darkness, we can find a way out of the darkness. But what do you do when you are the darkness? Huh? Oh. What do you do when you are the darkness? Has anyone ever lived with, walked, I'm sorry, not lived with, let's just take it back. <clears throat> Has anyone ever been around any, anyone or people that just like, it just feels gloomy? It just feels like, ah, I don't want to be around. Like, I don't feel like I'm being encouraged here. Like, it's just a gloomy situation. Like, there's something's dark about that. You don't maybe say it, you don't, but you do think it. But it's not just the darkness that's around or that we're in. The Bible says that we were the darkness. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. And I want to lay this down strong today because... If we don't understand this, there's no point in me preaching it's on you and all the good stuff. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8. Ephesians. What did I say? Ephesians 5, verse 8. In the New King James Version. Oh, I get it. For you were once, for you were once, for you were once darkness. darkness, but now you are light. light where? In the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. See, the thing is, you're not just walking in darkness. You were the darkness. You were full of darkness. But on your own. And if it was like the light of God and the power of God, you would not have to go to bed at night and get rest and recharge and refresh. You would not have to like plug in your phones and get what? Recharge and battery up and let's go. It's down to 77%. Some of us this morning look like that you're at 7%. Right? But you came here to get recharged back up to 100%. Guess what? We can't get back to 100% on our own ability. The church is not going to charge you back up to 100%. You are not going to be charged back, back up to your fullness until you allow the fullness of God's full power to envelop you, to cover you, to hover all over you. So that when you walk, you're not walking in your might. You're not walking in your power. But you're walking by the Spirit of God. And the world is not seeing you. The world is seeing the light of the world. The, oh. Amen. 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 Go, baby, go. Thank you. Thank you. See, we're, we're trying to live life trying to shed off our light. We're trying to turn on the spotlights and we're trying to turn on all the lights so that people can see us. Huh? We're trying to show that, hey, to show our kids, hey, I can be a good dad and I can be a good mom. Or we're trying to be, show our spouse, we can be a good husband or we can be a good, look what I can do for you. Or we're trying to be a good leader or a good volunteer or a good pastor or a good person or a good human being, whatever you are. God bless you. But you can't do it on your own because you don't have a light of your own. This is not your light. This is the light of the Lord. And the light of the Lord only comes when you don't walk on your own. You gotta walk with Jesus. You gotta walk in Jesus. You gotta remain in Christ. You gotta remain in His presence. You gotta remain in His Word. You gotta remain in His love. And if you can remain in Him, He can shine all day long. Spirit of the living God. We're trying to shine on our own. <laughs> and quickly that shine's gonna go. And then they're gonna throw some shade on you. Oh, oh, I got two things oh. for me. <laughs> They're going to throw some shade on you because after, guess what? When you start to shine on your own, people are not going to like it when you start shining. Huh? Mm -hmm. Anyone have some jealous folks in your life? Mm 
Don't 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 nod your head right now. If you got some jealous folks in your life, if you got some naysayers in your life, if you got some enemies in your life, just say amen. Amen. Oh, you guys don't have anybody? <laughs> Guess what? You don't have it because you're trying to shine on your own. But when you start shining in the light of the Lord, all the enemies will stand up. It's not people. It's the enemies of the Lord. Yes. And when the enemies of the Lord see that the light of... See, the enemy doesn't have to stand up against you when you're shining on your own light. No. Huh? No. Thank you, Jesus. That was no. not even... <laughs> when you're shining on your own light, the enemy says, oh, go ahead, shine on your own. Guess what? Because one day you're going to be out of charge. You're going to be out of power. You're going to come down and you're going to make mistakes on your own. Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But I promise you, the day you start shining in the light of the Lord, the enemies will stand up because the enemy knows, oh, this is not like a human natural light. This is not a manufactured glory. This is not a manufactured presence. This is the true, sincere, pure presence and light of God. And when that pure, sincere, powerful light of the glory of God comes and shines upon your life, I promise you all the enemies of Satan, all the enemies of God, and all the powers of hell, and all the schemes of man will start to come up in your life. And when it comes up in your life, I promise you, you are in the right place. Amen. Some of you think, oh, I'm under attack. It's like, oh, I'm in a bad place. No, 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 no. When you're under attack in all different forms and from all different angles, I promise you, you may be in the right place. You may be positioned perfectly because you are in Christ and the world is seeing the light of God in your life. Amen. So don't be afraid of the attacks. Just continue to secure yourself right behind the Father. Amen. Secure yourself right behind Trump and watch him shine on for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, you know, some of, I've taught and I've done and made the mistake that we can just talk to darkness like God did and it just goes away. But never in the Bible does it say for us to speak into darkness. It just says for us to be the light. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. The Bible, we read the scriptures already and I'm running out of time so I, don't, I, don't, I can't go all into it. But the Bible never tells us because guess what? What the Lord has already spoken, we don't need to speak again. Amen. Amen. The Lord spoke. Mm -hmm. And He needs to speak more than we need to speak. Amen. When God speaks, His word and His voice trumps any other word and any other voice. And you don't need to hear my voice. You need to hear the voice of God. You don't need to hear anyone else's voice. You need to hear the voice of God. And if you hear the voice of God, all you and I have to do is be the light. Amen. You know, I heard a story um, of a, a lady in the church. Not this church, I promise you. Lady in the church. She's more of a strong, dominant personality, right? And she's married and... She's been, she's been in relationship with the Lord, but her husband's not in relationship with the Lord. And she's been coming to church all these years and praying and crying and for him. And, you know, shared with the pastor one day, you know, I'm, I have, I'm with Christ and I'm saved. But, you know, my husband's not. And I've been praying for him all these years. You know, I, I tell him at the breakfast table, I sit in front of him. And, you know, we have breakfast and I start crying and tearing up. And I just start telling him that he needs to be saved. You know, I skip, we make, have dinner, we sit across the table, and, and we, we start talking, I start crying, and I tell him, you need to be saved. This went on for years. I feel, just hearing the story, I was like, I feel sorry for the guy. <coughs> Forget about just preaching to him, you got to see your wife crying every day. That's the secret weapon, folks. Men, if you're not married, guys, they start crying in front of you, that's a secret weapon. That they're going to pull out. <coughs> just, that's another series. <laughs> anyway, he, he goes, he goes, she goes to the pastor and says, uh, I've been praying. And he, he starts praying for her husband faithfully. And then slowly he starts coming to church. Oh, that's a big win, right? Not saved yet, but coming to church. And she's like, oh, can you just preach to him to get saved? Can you just make sure that he's saved? Or can you do whatever you can to make sure that he, you know, he's coming to Christ? But I don't think he's ever going to accept Christ. And he's like... Like Debbie Down. And coming to a point where uh, 
<clears throat> she goes to him. He's coming to church, but he's still not accepting Christ. And the pastor one day pulled her to the side and said, you know what? How about this? Instead of you preaching to him all these days and for all these years, and you've been doing a great job, good, all that good. But it's for going forward, how about this? You just start making him the best breakfast. Amen. And making him the best food and the best dinner. And you just start loving on him and be the sweetest and most sincere woman that he can have as a wife. And you just be the best wife. And she said, no, that's never going to work. It's never going to work. you got to preach to him. But, you know, she said, you know what, Pastor, you said it, so I'm going to try it. And she tried it, and she just stopped preaching to him every day. And she started loving on him every day and serving him every day and doing what she can do to be an a, a encouragement to him every day. And within six months, he gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's a real story. Amen. Amen. What she was preaching for years, when she shifted the approach from preaching into the darkness, and she said she started shifting from preaching into the darkness, she started saying, I'm going to be the light in the darkness. That's when things started shifting. Amen. You know, I shared this earlier this week, and you can't preach away darkness. I can, the lights can be off, and I can preach all I want, but that darkness is still going to be there. Until we turn on the lights, there is still darkness. Until you and I are the light. And you know why I wonder, why is this world such a dark place? Because maybe all these people that we call ourselves as Christ followers, we're still turned off. If we did speak up, or if we did stand up, or if we did rise up and shine, imagine how different the world would be. Don't blame the darkness on the world. Look at ourselves if we've been in the light in the darkness. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3, it reads like this. I'll just read 1, 2, and 3 just to close. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Praise God. Praise God. Here it says in verse 1, the glory of the Lord is risen upon, what does it say? Upon you. In verse 2 it says, in the end part, and his glory will be seen upon you. Verse 2 it says at the last half, the Lord will rise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. Three things there. Quickly, the glory of the Lord rises upon you, the Lord will rise over you, and the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. And when the glory of the Lord is seen, and the light of God is seen upon us, it's an attraction. Amen? Amen. We're not attractive on our own. But what makes us attractive is the light of God. Hallelujah. And to this church, I want to tell you, in this day, in this season, as we're, as we're moving forward, Kings and nations are watching. Kings and nations are watching. Kings and nations are watching. And those kings and nations are not dignitaries out in big mansions or, or state offices. I'm talking about the kings and the rulers and nations and the nationalities and the ethnic groups that are all around us in our life. They're watching. In your workplace, you got a king and a nation that's watching you. In your school, you have a king and a nation that's watching you. In your home, you have a king and a nation that's watching you. The question is, will your light be attracting them? We're going to sing an old song. Carry your candle. And we all have a candle that we have deep down in our soul. That it can only be lit by the power and the love of God. Anything I can do with fire, I will do. If they can turn all the lights off one more time, I'm sorry. All the lights stay in You're going out and we're going to pray and release you into a dark world. I promise you, we're releasing into a dark world. 
For you and I have the dark. The darkness can be taken care of by the light of God. And each one of us have a candle. And because of your safety and practical reasons, I'm not going to give you each a candle. But I want to ask you to use your phones. Take your phones out right now. This is time you can use your phones. And just turn on the flashlight. Everybody, and hold it up. Come on, hold it up. Stand to your feet all over this house.
not in our ability, not in our mind, oh God, not in our natural power. But God, I ask you that, dear Lord, you light up our life, oh Lord Jesus. Lord, with you, the person of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you will help us to carry our candles lit up by you. And Lord, to carry this light into this dark world, oh Father God. Help us not to complain about the darkness, but help us to speak up and rise up and shine with the light of God upon our life, oh Lord Jesus. Lord, let us not give in to the darkness, oh God, but let us stand up with the light, oh God. Let us not give in to the darkness, oh God, but let us stand up with the light, oh Lord Jesus, and help us to be the light in our world. We commit every life, every young person, every elder, every person in this house, oh God, that we can carry our candle, go light our world, oh Lord Jesus. For the name of Jesus Christ to be lifted up and glorified. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord. In a moment, we're going to give to you in our worship through our practical resources, oh God. Through our finances and our offering and our tithes, oh God, we're going to give to you. Lord, even that, let it be a light to this world, oh Lord Jesus. Let our giving be a light, oh Father God, to this house. And let this house continue to be a light in this community. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We bless your people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Help us to go carry our candle and go light the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen.